everyone. It's so lovely to meet with you all today. My name is Andrea Board, and I'm an admissions officer here at the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're so excited to introduce you to Penn's academic ecosystem. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Campbell. I'm also an admissions officer here at Penn, and Andrea and I are so thrilled to talk to you a little bit about the university. During today's session, we will be sharing information about Penn's educational philosophy and the opportunities that it presents to different kinds of students. We'll also be sharing some tips and resources for navigating the admissions and financial aid processes here at Penn. Hopefully, this information will prove useful if you are planning to apply to other selected institutions. If you'd like to learn more about student life or the residential experience here at Penn beyond what we covered today, please feel free to sign up for a virtual tour, which you can find on our website. As we open with a shot of students on campus enjoying a beautiful day, we would like to offer a land acknowledgement. Penn occupies the traditional homelands of the Lenni Lenape. We acknowledge this fact to express gratitude to the indigenous people, both past and present, for the opportunity to live and learn on Lenape Hoking, land of the Lenape. All right, let us get started. As many of you are looking ahead and exploring your college options, you may come across a series of adjectives that describes a university's core attributes, which after time may all start to sound very familiar, but they rarely tell you how those attributes translate to the college experience. Well, here at Penn, we present a synopsis or snapshot, if you will, um, of our core attributes and what it means to explore and experience a Penn education. So at a glance, we are a medium-sized Ivy League Liberal Arts and Sciences Research University based here in Philadelphia, founded by Benjamin Franklin. And today we like to contextualize some of Penn's defining attributes as you continue your college search process. Absolutely. So first and foremost, we are a medium-sized institution. We have about 10,000 undergraduate students on campus, which is great because it allows you to meet new people, explore your interests, try new things, while still feeling that strong sense of community. 81% of our classes here have fewer than 30 students, and 95% of our classes are taught by faculty members, not graduate students. And so you really have the ability to engage with both your fellow students and your professors in a meaningful way. As a medium-sized institution, we are not the largest nor the smallest university within the Ivy League. The Ivy League has come to mean many different things over the years, but at its core, it is an athletic conference. We play sports with a handful of other schools. Beyond that, it's important to know that all of the universities in the Ivy League have a commitment to need-based financial aid. We don't award scholarships in the traditional sense, so we don't have merit scholarships or athletic scholarships. Every single dollar that's awarded to students is based on need, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Penn is grounded in the liberal arts and sciences. We live in this ever evolving 21st century and we wanna make sure that our students are well equipped to tackle the challenges of the day. And so all students, regardless of major, will study the natural sciences, social sciences, arts and humanities. We really feel that it's important to have a well-rounded education. We're also a research university. Our faculty are absolutely amazing. They're at the very forefront of their respective fields. And as a student, you have the opportunity to literally create knowledge alongside of them, not just passively absorb it. Sometimes students assume that doing research means you are you know, wearing goggles and working with test tubes. It's kind of limited to the STEM fields, and that is absolutely not the case, right? We have research being conducted in literally every academic discipline that you can think of. And so if this is something that you're wanting to pursue as an undergraduate student, know that we have a lot of opportunities for you here at Penn. Of course, we are located in the beautiful and kind of gritty city of Philadelphia, which you may know as the land of cheesesteaks and the Liberty Bell, um, but I promise Philly is about so much more than that, right? Whether you are someone who enjoys exploring museums or going to sporting events, getting involved in politics, community service, spending time in nature, checking out the food scene, there is so much to do here in Philly. The list just goes on and on and on. So many ways to engage with the community just beyond the confines of campus. 
And then lastly, we were founded by Benjamin Franklin, who is one of America's founding fathers. He really believed that we should live our lives in service to society. And that is very much the ethos that so many of our students embody today. Now, talking a little bit more about Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin was an innovative leader who wore many different hats during his lifetime. And you could imagine that Benjamin Franklin had no idea the many ways in which he would impact society when he arrived here in Philadelphia in 1723 as a young, inspiring printer. But Benjamin Franklin believed that his talents and gifts surpassed that of just one industry or pathway. And in doing so, he went on to become a scientist, an inventor, a diplomat, a founding father of America, America, all within a core mission to give back to the greater good of society. Uh, Benjamin Franklin will be pleased to know that many of Penn students follow in his footsteps to explore beyond one discipline and forge your own path. We'd like to introduce to you some Penn students who've done just that. So first we have Jack who came to Penn wanting to be an engineer. He discovered our engineering program in his exploration of ways to combine his love of both art and technology. Like Ben Franklin, his interests really range from the serious to the lighthearted. One of the very first classes that Jack took at Penn was called Introduction to Mechanics. Jack really counts that class's professor as one of his most important mentors. Not only did Professor Carpet commit to learning all of his students' names, but he also helped Jack really refresh his physics knowledge during office hours. And when Jack organized a panel on being out in academia, Professor Carpet was able to share his insights based on his own experience as a gay member of of the faculty. Jack took classes in Penn School of Design to explore his passion for art and even considered minoring in design, but ultimately decided that the flexibility to take classes without being tied to more formal requirements made the most sense for him. Penn actually allows all undergraduate students to take classes across the university's four undergraduate schools, as well as several of the graduate programs. Jack was a costume designer for the Penn Singers, where he outfitted Little Red Riding Hood in an original red raincoat worn in their production of Into the Woods. He also combined his passion for engineering and design during an internship at SpaceX, where he worked on the team designing spacesuits. Jack was further in charge of building the driver interface as part of Penn Electric Racing, a club that designs, builds, and competitively races vehicles. During his senior year, he took a graduate level engineering course on integrated product design, where his team built a robot that now lives in the Philadelphia Museum of Art as part of an installation on the intersection of art and technology. Jack was someone who came to Penn with a sense of what he enjoyed doing, and Penn allowed him to really find new sources of inspiration to explore those interests. After graduation, he moved to the Bay Area to work at Apple as part of the iPhone design team. All right, now we'll dive right into Penn's academic ecosystem and undergraduate landscape. When you're applying to the University of Pennsylvania, you're applying to one of our four undergraduate schools, which serves as a student's home base to receive the brunt of their academic advising, with each school having its own curricular requirements and offering its own degrees. However, a Penn education is designed to allow students to explore and foster a multitude of academic and co-curricular interests across all four of the schools. There will always be opportunities for interdisciplinary studies, and it's not unusual for students to cross boundaries for learning, conducting research, or joining clubs. This is actually a part of Penn's DNA. It's what we're known for. So let's dive right into Penn's landscape and learn more about each of the four undergraduate schools, starting with the College of Arts and Sciences. So the College of Arts and Sciences, also known as the college, is really considered to be the beating heart of Penn because it's home to two thirds of all undergraduate students. And actually all undergrad students, regardless of major, will take classes in the college by the time they graduate. The college awards Bachelor of Arts degrees in 60 academic subjects, and it's home to the natural sciences, the social sciences, as well as the humanities. 
the college is the only one of our four undergraduate schools that does not have a core curriculum, which means there aren't certain classes that every single student is required to take in order to graduate. Instead, students who are in the college have some general education requirements that kind of focus broadly on knowledge and skills development. Now, from our largest school to our smallest school, next we have the School of Nursing, which enrolls a cohort of about 100 students each academic year. Now, don't let that fool you. Our nurses are a small but mighty bunch. Um, they're prepared with over 800 hours of clinical training upon graduation at one of the few uh, teaching hospitals located on campus or through various clinical sites located throughout Philadelphia. Um, our nurses have access to state-of-the-art technology and lab facilities that prepare them to care for patients of various cohorts cultural backgrounds. For the third year, Penn's nursing program is considered the number one nursing program in the country. And in fact, Penn nurses graduate with some of the highest starting salaries of any other Penn undergraduates. Maybe that gets you interested in the nursing field. Next, we have the School of Engineering and Applied Science. So here, students can choose from a Bachelor of Science in Engineering or a Bachelor of Applied Science in areas ranging from bioengineering to digital media design. As the place where the world's first electronic computer was invented, we should note that Penn's Computer Science Department lives in the School of Engineering and Applied Science, and this is where you should apply if you would like a degree in computer science. Also, somewhat unique to Penn, students in the College of Arts and Sciences may take a second major in any of the applied science majors that we have in engineering and vice versa, with engineers taking second majors in the college. And now we have Wharton. The Wharton School is considered America's first and oldest business school and is highly regarded around the world for its ability to prepare students to become business leaders and make a positive impact on global economic and social policy issues. A Wharton curriculum is rooted in applied business knowledge where students have the opportunity to take collaborative and thought-provoking courses in marketing, economic policy, finance, or any other field, just to name a few. Now, rather than having majors, Wharton prepares students under the umbrella of business education and encourages students to declare concentrations that align with their professional interests. Additionally, about 30% of the curriculum will be rooted in the liberal arts and sciences to give our scholars a well-rounded, comprehensive educational experience. So that was just a brief overview of the academic ecosystem here at Penn, but we certainly encourage you to continue doing your own research after the session. As you continue to explore the four undergraduate schools or other universities in your college search, we really encourage you to embrace exploration. Many students make the mistake of starting with a particular major uh, because they associate that major with a particular career track. It's certainly not a bad thing to have some sense of direction, but it's probably more productive to start instead with thinking very broadly about the interests that you have right now. So this is a really cool tool that we have on our website where you can go on and select one or more of these concepts and read stories of real Penn students who have the same interests and you can learn about how they've experienced the university. So the classes they've taken, the professors they've done research with, the study abroad programs they've gone on. It's a really nice way to start to visualize yourself as a student on our campus. You'll notice that these are not majors, they're not programs, they're not schools, they're simply ideas, right? And that's where we really encourage you to start is just by thinking broadly about what interests you. So we're going to take the example of healthcare right now and talk about three students who are all studying the field of healthcare, but doing it in very different ways. First, we have Chamela, who is a student in the College of Arts and Sciences studying biology. Her goal is to become a physician scientist. She was really interested in doing research, so she got connected with a microbiology lab over at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She and a couple friends co-founded an organization called WASH, which stands for Water Access, Sanitation, and Hygiene, um, and they're doing some really amazing work helping to fight infectious and waterborne diseases in West Africa. 
Then we have Jose, who is a student in the School of Nursing. Jose was inspired to pursue nursing after witnessing the impact that a nurse had on his mother during a hospital stay several years ago. He took one of our academically based community service courses called Social Determinants of Health, and he's done a lot of work with the Latinx community right here in South Philly, as his goal is to empower communities through health education. And then finally, we have Bella, who is a student in the Life Sciences and Management program, one of our coordinated dual degree programs between the College of Arts and Sciences and the Wharton School. As a high school student, Bella was really interested in both science and business, and so now she's studying neuroscience and healthcare management. During her first year, she got to participate in something called the Commercialization Acceleration Program, where she got to work as a consultant for an early stage biotech company. All right, so let's try another example with the interest of global engagement. Now, when you think of global engagement, the option to study abroad probably comes to mind. Here at Penn, we have over 100 different ways to explore traditional study abroad programs. Um, with a growing student body that is represented by over 110 countries, we like to encourage our scholars to explore global communities and learn from over 40 different languages at the Penn Language Center. Um, we also have the option to take a Penn Global Seminar, where students can learn classroom style here on campus, but have an opportunity to travel abroad the last few weeks of the semester to really deepen their understanding of said community. I'm um, pictured here as Sonari, a student in the college who traveled to Jordan as part of the human rights forced migration and education class. So let's take a moment to summarize what we've been sharing. While you're researching schools for the best fit, you should first consider your broader academic interests and strengths. As you explore your interests in more depth, you'll see that some academic and professional interests you have will likely span across more than one of Penn's undergraduate schools. Remember, there are many different paths to personal success, and while you may think you know exactly who you want to be and where you want to go, here at Penn you'll have the chance to explore and pursue interests and talents that you never knew existed. Take one of our alums, for example, Bing Chen, who came to Penn thinking he would become a lawyer. Yeah, so Bing arrived at Penn wanting to be a leader on the global stage. He initially thought law school was the way he'd accomplish this after graduating from Penn, so he thought about majors associated with that particular path and joined Penn's student government. He really liked some aspects of that path, but he had a secret. Bing was a talented writer, but like all students everywhere, he was a little worried about getting a job and resisted majoring in English, thinking that it wouldn't land him where he could make the most impact after Penn. One day, his academic advisor encouraged him to attend an alumni talk given by Rich Ross, who was the chairman of Walt Disney Studios at the time. Bing learned that Rich had studied English and international relations when he was at Penn. They really hit it off, and Rich helped Bing secure an internship with Disney two summers in a row. He also explained that it wasn't about a particular major that shaped who he was, but learning from people with diverse experiences and ideas around campus. The experience that Bing had, both the internship and the mentorship that he received from Rich, gave him the courage to declare English and creative writing as a major, realizing that he could still get a job as long as he did well. Well, let's fast forward to senior year. Bing was not only hired by Google, but was the only Penn student his year to join their management training cohort. This eventually led him to lead a division at YouTube, which he left after five years to start his own entertainment and media company and has been very active in advocating for Asian representation in Hollywood. So you've heard a bit about the many opportunities here at Penn and how students take advantage of them to form their own unique paths. However, students excel at Penn not only because they are brilliant and amazing and talented, but because they are willing to ask for help when they need it. And so we certainly encourage all of you to, to follow their lead. Students' path uh, to figuring out who, what they care about, who they are, or who they want to become has involved taking risks. And these risks 
tend to look different for everyone. They might include meeting new people or exploring co-curricular activities like service, research, student organizations. Whatever these risks might look like for you, they should hopefully help you realize that learning what you don't want is just as valuable as figuring out what you do want. And while taking risks might seem scary, Penn is here to support you in whatever way you need to be supported. Students find support and inspiration in many different places across campus. As one final example of how Penn's community fosters growth, we would like to introduce Aaliyah. All right. Um, Aaliyah was such an amazing person. Um, she is originally from Las Vegas and has always wanted to explore Middle Eastern studies, but also deeply cared about social justice. So in her first year, she was able to join the Integrated Studies Program, which is a cohort of about 80 students and a team taught course centered around mixed disciplines. Aaliyah's cohort was Identity, Inheritance, and Change. In her second year, she took the Religion, Social Justice, and Urban Development course with Professor Lamas, who later became her absolute favorite teacher and mentor. Aaliyah then went on to declare a major in urban studies and had the opportunity to intern at the Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger, blending her unique academic and personal interests within the broader Philadelphia community. So as you can see, our students are, have many different pathways and ways they are pursuing their interests and passions, and we encourage you to do the same when you become a Penn student. So you've heard about some of our academic opportunities at Penn, but our students are also encouraged to explore and connect beyond that classroom in an effort to build a purposeful community. From Maku Black Cultural Resource Center, La Casa Latina, Penn Asian American Community House, just to name a few, these centers exist for students to connect with aspects of their identity, foster community, and celebrate their collegiate experience. Additionally, there are various support structures and centers in place to help students foster co-curricular interests and receive the resources they need to step into their full potential. From Penn First Plus and the Wine Garden Center for Student Learning to the Kelly's Writers House and the Penn Innovation Center, there are so many different ways for you to get involved on campus and each student has the opportunity to build their own pathway to success here at Penn. But there is one thing that all Penn students have in common. They all started their journey in the same way as you, exploring your college options and navigating through the college application process. Absolutely. So all of the students you've heard about throughout this session all started right where you are. They embarked on this journey and we as admissions officers got to learn about them through their applications. So Andre and I are going to spend the second part of the presentation talking about the different components. We'll let you know what we're looking for and give you some tips and tricks for success. At Penn, we practice something called comprehensive review, which you may or may not already be familiar with. It's essentially this idea that all parts of your application are important, right? All pieces of the puzzle matter because we really are trying to figure out who you are, not just as a student, but as a person and potential member of our community. We're really looking to understand that big picture. So as you can see, there are a number of items that we use to evaluate your application, including your academic performance, your extracurricular involvement, your essays, and then we also offer optional conversations with alumni, and those are not used to evaluate your application. When you apply to the University of Pennsylvania, you will apply directly to one of the four undergraduate schools or a coordinated dual degree program. And that essentially will be the lens through which we review your application. We don't admit students to the university as a whole. We admit students directly to the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Nursing, what have you. And so we really encourage you to consider all of your options, really be thoughtful and intentional about selecting the school or program that you feel is going to be the best fit for you. In terms of the timeline, we have two decision plans for you to choose from. 
early decision and regular decision. Our early decision deadline is November 1st. And so if you apply under early decision, you will hear back sometime in mid-December. And this is going to be a binding agreement, which means if you are admitted, the expectation is that you will enroll. Early decision is a great option for students who are super excited about Penn. They know with 100% certainty it is where they want to be. They just cannot imagine going to school anywhere else. It's also a great option for students who feel like by November 1st, their application is as strong as it can possibly be. Everything is kind of wrapped up in a bow, ready to go. That's early decision. Regular decision comes a little bit later. That deadline is January 5th. And you, if you apply in regular decision, you'll hear back in the spring, typically late March or very beginning of April. It's important to know that we have the same comprehensive review process for both early decision and regular decision. All students receive full consideration. Um, choosing between the two is going to be a personal choice. Um, thinking about whether or not you're prepared to make that commitment to Penn by November 1st, or perhaps you'd like a bit more time to maybe work on your application or consider other options um, in the spring. All right. When it comes to reading your transcript, we as admissions officers look to see how well have you managed a challenging curriculum. We take a look at not only your transcript and the requirement of those really good and high grades, but also how you maximize your high school experience by taking the most rigorous courses made available to you. And also we're looking for any honors and awards that you may have accumulated along the way. The transcript is a great way to understand your academic interests through the rigorous courses that you have taken. For the 2023-2024 admission cycle, Penn will continue to remain test optional, which means you are not required to submit any SAT or ACT scores. Applicants who choose not to submit test scores will not be at a disadvantage in the admissions process. We as admissions officers feel like we have more than enough information within your application to make a really wholesome, comprehensive decision in lieu of those test scores. So whether or not you choose to submit them will not affect you in the admissions process negatively or positively, and the decision is entirely up to you. When it comes to letters of recommendations, we prefer to receive letters from those who have recently taught or worked with you, typically in junior or senior year. We recommend that you ask people who can share what you contribute to your community and maybe classroom environment and who truly know who you are as a person. We do require three letters of recommendation, one of which is automatically populated by your school counselor and one from a current or recent teacher. Now, this third letter can come from almost anyone. Um, it could be a supervisor from a part-time job, a mentor, a spiritual or cultural leader. It should at least come from someone who knows you personally and whose perspective would add information that is not captured elsewhere in your application. So really dig deep and be thoughtful of who you ask to write your letters of recs. Now we're going to talk about some of the more qualitative aspects of the application, beginning with extracurricular activities. This really encompasses everything that you do outside of the classroom. So, of course, it can be things like school sports or clubs, but it could also be part time jobs, potentially family responsibilities, involvement in your spiritual community. Please rest assured that we don't have a preference for certain activities over others. We really value quality over quantity and we want to understand, you know, what's important to you. What are you passionate about? What might you want to continue doing once you're a student on our campus? So we're gonna do a quick exercise for the activity section here. This is pretty typical of what we as admissions officers see on our end when we're reading applications. This student plays the clarinet in marching band. We can see they've been involved in that all throughout high school. It looks like they were picked to be drum major in senior year. And then they're also involved in speech and debate, serving as vice president, great. Right, this is totally fine. A nice way of writing the activity section, but this is an even better way of writing the activity section. 
So a few things to note here. We can see that the student has highlighted their leadership positions. It's very easy to see drum major and vice president. They've quantified some of what they're doing. So we know this is an 80 plus member band. They've coached five underclassmen. They've shown progression in terms of their leadership. So they started off as clarinet section leader, then they became drum major assistant, and now they're drum major. And they've added something that we didn't necessarily know about them from reading the previous slide. This student has family responsibilities. They're taking care of a 10-year-old sibling, translating for parents. That's really significant. And we would not have known that if they'd only submitted what was on that previous slide. So when it comes to filling out your extracurricular activity section, we really encourage you to take some time, consider all that you do outside of the classroom and tell us about those things. Now we get to everyone's favorite part of the college application process, your essays. I remember being a high school student. I understand that, you know, essay writing isn't necessarily everyone's favorite thing, but I want to assure you, and I think I speak for all my colleagues when I say we genuinely love reading your essays. We think it is so much fun and so fascinating to learn about you and your experiences and your hopes and dreams. Uh, so please rest assured that what you write is really being received with a lot of love and care. When it comes to your personal statement, as cliche as it sounds, the best piece of advice I can give you is to just be yourself, right? Use your authentic voice. It's perfectly fine to have, you know, your family members or your teachers read over your essay, provide feedback, but at the end of that process, you want to make sure that it still sounds like you, uh, because we're really not interested in reading your family member's essay or your teacher's essay or chat GPT's essay. We really want to read your essay. If you can imagine, you know, writing your personal statement and taking it to school, if you dropped it in the hallway and it didn't have your name on it, I want your best friend to be able to pick it up and immediately know that you wrote it. That's how personal your personal statement should be. In addition to the personal statement, we have a couple pen specific short answer questions. The first one is asking you to think about community at Penn. So considering your experiences, your perspective, how do you see those things shaping the Penn community and vice versa? And then we'd also ask you to write a short thank you note to someone that you have not yet thanked and would like to acknowledge. We recognize that applying to college can be kind of stressful. It's kind of a chaotic time. And we wanted to you know, provide this opportunity to just make you feel good and put a smile on your face, right? So of course, there's no right or wrong answer here. We're just encouraging you to take a couple minutes, think about somebody who has helped you along your journey and write them a quick thank you note. If you have the ability to share this note with the person that you're addressing it to, we definitely encourage you to do that. Hopefully it'll bring them some joy and put a smile on their face. Um, but rest assured that it's not required. Once you have written, dear so-and-so, thank you for fill in the blank, you've done all that we are asking you to do. Brand new this year, we are asking all of our applicants to respond to a prompt specifically related to the undergraduate school or the coordinated dual degree program to which they are applying. Previously, students were asked about how they intend to explore their intellectual interests at the University of Pennsylvania. Now we're asking students specifically about the school or the program to which they are applying. So if you're applying to the College of Arts and Sciences, you'll have a specific prompt for Arts and Sciences. If you're applying to the School of Nursing, you'll have a prompt specifically about the School of Nursing. We want to understand how you are excited about exploring your academic interests at Penn in your specific school or program. And then lastly, this one does not require any writing. Um, we are really interested in hearing about how students envision themselves engaging with various centers and spaces around campus. So you'll see a list of uh, all the hubs and opportunities that we have here. You'll be able to click on links and learn a little bit about each one and then indicate what you might be interested in um, connecting with. Please rest assured this is not used to evaluate your application in any way. We genuinely are just curious in, in hearing about how you anticipate getting involved with the campus community.
Now, new this year, most applicants will be invited to engage in what we call an alumni conversation. This is an opportunity for you to learn more about Penn from someone who can actually speak from that experience and a space for you to share some more information about yourself, your interests, and your decision to apply to Penn. Now, the alumni conversation is non-evaluative in nature, and applicants have the option to opt out. So whether or not you participate in these conversations will have no bearing on your admissions decision, but we do hope that the conversation will help you envision yourself here at Penn and should you opt out to speak to one of our alumni. Um, also, just for reference, all conversations will be conducted virtually and will be subject to alumni availability. So no need to make arrangements to come to campus. We'll do our best to connect with you. And last but not least, as a reminder, and as an Ivy League institution, Penn awards financial aid based on your family's demonstrated need. And we are 100% committed to doing so through work study and Penn sponsor grants. And that's the good kind of money that doesn't require it to be repaid or accrues debt. Now with millions of dollars at our disposal to support your undergraduate education, this means it's very possible to graduate from Penn debt-free. Um, and demonstrated need is determined through the application process, which requires the College Scholarship Service, also known as the CSS profile, um, Penn's own independent financial aid application, much shorter this year, about one to two pages. Um, and for US citizens and permanent residents, we require the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. And starting this year, for admitted students whose families make less than $75,000 are eligible to receive financial aid packages that fully cover tuition, fees, and room and board. Um, families can review an estimate of their financial aid package and total cost of attendance by scanning the QR code that you see on the screen here and using um, either our net price calculator and my intuition to really calculate what those numbers may look like for you and your family. With that being said, Andre and I want to thank you so much for tuning in for this session. We sincerely hope this has been helpful. We wish you the very best of luck as you embark or continue on your college search process. And if at any point in time our office can be of assistance to you, please do feel free to reach out. We are more than happy to be a resource. Thank you again and take care. Thank you so much. See you soon.